are you? How you doing, Miss Lucille? I'm blessed. I'm doing wonderful. Well, thank you so much for making time for us. I'm honored that you all would welcome me on the radio show. I'm happy. Well, I love the title of your book. What you're doing. I love the title of your book, Walk Like You Have Somewhere to Go. Now, what, what inspired you to write the book? That book has been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Well, it started out as a bio, mm -hmm. but it turned into a memoir. I just want to share part of my life with the readers. Mm -hmm. And people, they don't know me. They only know of me. Mm -hmm. So I just took time to just write a little bit about my life. I wanted to share the good, the bad, and some of the ugly, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you were a teen mom, right? Yes, yeah, Shaquille was born when I was just out of high school, fresh mm -hmm. out of high school, matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And what happened to that man? Well, <laughs> he's still alive, but you know, that's the story in itself. I think it's for inquiring minds that want to know. They're going to have to read the book. Oh, <laughs> <that. laughs> but, but let me ask you this. I mean, we obviously have an epidemic of teens who watch their moms raise their, you know, kids without fathers. What do mm -hmm. you say to them? Um, as a role model, as a mom who tried to do this, what do you say to that 17-year-old? Well, I first want to tell them that it's not the end of the world. They have to know that. Mm -hmm. Because we all live, we make mistakes. When Shaquille was born, it was a sin in my house. But by the grace of God, I had help. I had a grandmother, I had a mother. But for the teens that don't have anyone, they will have to look within themselves and accept the responsibility and look to God for strength, courage, and help. There is promise, and there is a good future. That's right. Now, all you have to do is buckle down and accept the responsibility. It's easier said than done, but all things are possible. I'm a witness to that. So my story is a witness as well as a testimony. Mm -hmm. Good things come out of bad things, and they all need to know that it's not the end of the world. Did you ever think Shaquille would be the, the superstar champ he is today? Back then, No. Right. I didn't think I didn't even see this. You can't see into the future, so no. But I knew he had dreams. Mm -hmm. Shaquille was always bigger than the average child his age. So when he got to a certain age, we kind of helped him with the dream. He wanted to play sports. Matter of fact, he played all of them. He played baseball, football. But he got to be a certain age, and while playing football, they started to tackle him at his knees. Mm -hmm. So he quit football and started getting into basketball. What a great way to go. <laughs> well, you know, back then, who could afford to send a child to college? Right, right. right. So we yeah, had to tell like, well, like back then, like it's to better now. <laughs> this is one way that you can do it. That's right. Now, Miss Dollarship. Now, Lucille, you're the president of the Mothers of Professional Basketball Players. And mm -hmm. what what is that organization about? I find that interesting. Well, the that organization, of course, is comprised of mothers of professional basketball players and WNBA players in the Farm League. And we come together as an organization to support communities where our sons and daughters live, work, and play. Okay. Besides being a social organization, we support community efforts. Mm -hmm. This year, we're coming together in Orlando, and we're having a fundraising event. We're going to play basketball. Now, picture this. Imagine <laughs> this. We're going to play basketball with the mothers of the professional football players. Oh, oh that's great. Uh, Take it to the hoop. Take it to the hoop. And, and we call them the, the, that game, Hooping for Health, and we're raising money for the United Negro College Fund. Oh, I love it. I love it. So do you actually play? We, we do community efforts. Now, Lucille, you actually going to play? You going to play basketball? I'm going to coach. No, I'm going to coach. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> you know? I'm not running, and I'm going to be coaching along with Marie Jackson. That's Mark Jackson's mother. Oh, okay. okay. But I understand you're pretty tall, too. We're talking to Shaquille O'Neal's mom. How tall are you, Miss Lucille? I'm 6'2". Mm. Okay. That's that's all. Wow. Could I just have a little bit? I know, right? right? <laughs> You wouldn't know what to do with it you if you did. <laughs> uh, I had to learn, though, how to grow into that 6'2". I didn't want to be tall. I'm going to tell you ladies the truth. Really? So when did you discover that was the actually the thing to be? It took a lot of years. I have four children. Shaquille is my oldest. Mm -hmm. So as I grew into motherhood and accepted the responsibility of being a mother and a wife, I had to 
grow up. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say I grew up was because your wife, your mother, you got to stand up. When you start teaching your children to stand up and be tall and be courageous and learn how to live in the body that God gave you, you have to start living by example. Mm-hmm. So, no, that's awesome. I want to say. That's awesome because I know quite a few young girls who are, you know, 13, 14 and really tall, but they haven't mm-hmm. come into the knowingness of that 